Welcome back. This is Terry Jordan Adams of Sued by the Deck Collector. Hey, did I ever tell you about when they locked me out of the courtroom? <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me paint the picture for you. I had just gotten back into town and it was about five days before my status conference. And just so you know, the status conference is where the judge um, checks in on the plaintiff and the defendant to check their progress because the, the judge's goal is to get it into um, trial within a year. That never happens. I'm just saying. Anyway, um, but I'll explain more about the status conference later. Well, my first mistake was that I thought I had um, five days prior to the conference, to uh, the hearing, to enter it you know, in with the court. I was wrong. I was supposed to have submitted my status conference statement 15 days prior. So I was already 10 days late. So um, mistake number two, oh, this was a time where COVID was causing um, a lot of the establishments to be shut down. And I, don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking the court was going to be doing business as usual. So it never dawned on me to check the court's website. Well, when I did check the court's website, of course, they restricted some of the hearings to phone conference only. And yes, mine fell right into the phone conference. But here's the kicker. You had to register for the phone conference. So you by a certain date and a certain time. So I believe my status conference was on Monday, but I had to have registered by Friday at 4 p.m. Well, you know what happened, right? I went to register and they cut it off at 1.30 on Friday. <sighs> so, you know, now I'm freaking out a little bit. Oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? Um, I'm devastated, you know, but I'm like, okay. I just got to find a solution. So me being the smarty pants that I am, <laughs> I decided, well, you know what? The court's open, so I'm going to show up anyway. So I, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, they weren't open for me. <laughs> the, the, the courthouse itself was open, but I did not have access to my courtroom. So oh, I contacted my friend and I was like, listen, I need you to listen to the public line. And what the public line is, it's like sitting in the courtroom so you can hear the different cases that go on. Well, the public line is much, much like that, except it's over the phone. And, but they mute you and you, there's no interaction or whatever. So she's like, okay. And um, she knew that I was running around from department, from department to, you know, try to find, you know, someone that, that I could communicate with somebody that can help me in this situation. Because it wasn't for lack of trying that, you know, I wasn't able to register. Anyway, um, so I let her know, um, make sure to let me know when they contact, when they call my name. So, um Eventually, they sent me upstairs to the actual courtroom. And um, there was a gentleman that was up there that had, had access to the courtroom, that had come out of the courtroom. And um, unfortunately, he couldn't help me. So he wouldn't let me in the courtroom to talk to anybody. And he would not, he refused to go in and find the right person to communicate with me. He, he just wasn't interested and he didn't care. And um, so I was really bummed out. So I, I just text my friend, just let me know if they call my name. And she responded in caps, you're not in the courtroom? They called your name. I'm like, what? No, no. Oh my gosh. So now before I continue on this story, do me a favor, follow us and subscribe.
and please click that like button. It helps us to grow um, in our audience and we get more exposure by doing so. And also, I am going to create a mini series out of this because there's another half of this story that I'm going to share in the next episode. And then I am actually going to give you some good information that deals with the actual status conference in another episode. Um, I wanted to make the parts digestible. So make sure that you tune, stay tuned in because you're going to get some more juicy information. Okay. So anyway, so my friend, she texted me, you are not in the courtroom. They called your name. Oh my God. At this point, I'm feeling defeated. I worked so hard up to this point to respond to the lawsuit. I had avoided a default judgment. I represented myself. I was winning. And now I missed my hearing. <sighs> Devastated. The only thing I could do now was wait to the following day when they posted the minutes so that I could actually see what happened heart was in my stomach you know the next day my heart was in my stomach and in my my chest was pounding so the next day they entered the mints oh boy and it was shocking absolutely shocking the debt buyer midland funding did not show up for the hearing either what oh my god oh my god i was doing cartwheels in my head I promise you, I was doing cartwheels in my head. Not only did they not show up, but because they were the ones that filed the lawsuit, the judge rescheduled the hearing for an order to show cause with sanctions. The judge wanted to uh, wanted them to provide him with a reason why they blew off the court. Why did they blow off the hearing? And was willing to charge them for wasting the court's time. The judge did not focus on me at all. Ah, I'm so excited about that. Um, now, I would never say that this was typical, but I did receive an abundant blessing and I do not take that for granted. I am so grateful. Hmm. Anyway, so let me give you a taste of what happened that shaped the judge's demeanor or decisions. A. The debt buyer registered for the phone hearing and blew it off. They didn't show up. Strike one. B, the debt buyer did not submit their status conference statement at all. They registered and they didn't even submit the status conference straight statement. Hmm, tongue twister. Strike two. And in order to show cause, another hearing was scheduled to determine if that was going to be their strike three. They made the judge mad. It appeared that they did not have respect for the court. Even though my statement was late, mine was the only statement that the judge had to work from. So here's a couple of things I want to leave you with. Simple. Make sure you are very aware of your timelines. Also, no matter what, don't give up. You just don't know how the tables can turn for you. Thank you for joining me in this, this first part of the Status Conference series. Um, be sure to check the next episode to find out what happens in the Order to Show Cause hearing. Okay, that one's going to be really good. And um, then you're going to have another episode after that. So be sure to um, check the next episode. Stay tuned and you'll get the rest of the story. Um, this is Terry Jordan Adams, sued by the debt collector. Please follow us on Apple, Google, Spotify, and YouTube. Make sure you subscribe and like on all platforms. If you're new to our community, thank you so much for joining us. And please continue to come back for some more valuable content. We'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.